Again, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for episode 17 in the Global Webinar Series. My name is Dan Quigley. I'm the Director of Business Development and Marketing here at DSI. We know how valuable your time is. There are a lot of webinars, training sessions, Zoom calls, and Netflix series to catch up on. So we appreciate you spending your time with us. We have a very interesting presentation today. I haven't heard the whole presentation yet, but I did get a sneak peek at the slides. And I think you'll agree that this is a great case study illustrating how the Gleeble at TU Freiburg helped drive impressive results for the team there. As always, our goal will be to keep this webinar to one hour or less. If you have any questions during the presentation, please submit them using the chat feature here in the webinar. Our team will be available to answer some questions directly via the chat. And if time allows, we will have Q&A following the presentation with Dr. Kapala. As I always mention, video of the presentation will be available online soon, and certificates will also be emailed to you if you are listening to this live. You'll, you will be able to find a link to this video as well as videos of past webinars by going to our website at Gleeble.com and clicking on the resources link in the top navigation bar and then on webinars. And there you can view past webinars and sign up for future webinars. Next week's session will feature Joel Anderson from University West in Sweden. Joel will present some of the welding research that is being conducted at University West and the Gleeble based testing approach to assess weld cracking of nickel based super alloys. But today it's my pleasure to introduce our presenter, Dr. Jegorsh Kropala from Freiburg University of Mining and Technology. Dr. Kropala is with the Working Group Characterizing Material Parameters. He has been using the Gleeble HDSV40 for over 10 years and has presented at Gleeble user meetings and technical conferences. He and the impressive team at TU Freiburg have been very active working with industry, solving real world, real world problems for many years. So it's our honor to have Dr. Kobala present and share information about the Institute and their work. Jay Gorsh, thank you for preparing this presentation. I will virtually hand the microphone over to you. Thank you very much, Dan. <clears throat> um, I have very large pleasure to uh, to, to show you some results of my work since uh, 2009 on Gliebel, which we have since 2004. A few years ago, we will uh, we we had made some upgrade of the machine, so it's quite uh, unique uh, in whole world. There is, I think, three uh, times this machine, and um, this this large harvester of data. Uh, can generate uh, very important, uh, uh, very important uh, input for our uh, uh, institute, institute's work uh, by, for example, uh, development of uh, metal foaming technology. Uh, begin uh, by melting and ending on on um, semi finished product or even. Uh, uh, called roll it or or called um, uh, driving draw it uh, materials uh, wires and so on. So let me uh, let me uh, tell you a little bit about institute where I work together with uh, Professor Pral and uh, Professor Kavala. Uh, so <clears throat> our institute uh, is uh, have place in in the east side of. Uh, um, of Germany uh, in the boundary with uh, um, with Czech Republic and Poland here in this point, and uh, our staff uh, members are uh, uh, something like thirty people's uh, pe researcher with uh, some external PhDs. Um, our third party part research is approximately two and a half million uh, euro per year. Uh, that means uh, something like thirty percent of those are directly uh, money from uh, industry. And we try to integrate material knowledge into the forming technology and uh, process chain. Uh, com combinated process. Um, we, because our institute have large uh, facilities for testing, for uh, trials, and for melting, and so on, uh, we can uh, uh, we can uh, manage not only multi-scale numerical simulation approach like uh, 
uh, now on this time is very popular, but also multi-scale experiment simulation approach, uh, where we those two uh, two direction uh, we can we can combine those two direction um, research direction in in one. And uh, the example of uh, of it I will show you um, in case uh, my PhD thesis. Um, we started uh, by scientific aims at our institute with alloy technology and design, uh, where we our interest is on on um, magnesium, aluminium, copper, and iron. Of course, another uh, like super alloys or uh, or um, shape memory alloys are also by us uh, have also large interest. Um, and for those materials, um, we can apply uh, our methodology, uh, methodology in uh, process simulation and al also multi-scale material characterization, uh, not only uh, in case of uh, microstructure, uh, but also mechanical, thermomechanical, thermal uh, simply, and also uh, laboratory scale experiments or uh, pilot uh, trials. Um, the um, because metallic products which we have on on uh, on uh, world market are very different shape and so on. We can uh, we have decided since uh, I think ninety years ago that the, the institute will have interest uh, mostly in semi products like flat long and massive products um, such like uh, strip plates uh, uh, profiles wire um, also rods uh, and and uh, large parts uh, from open die or, or closed die forgings so um, the whole spectrum we can um, we can manage to develop some process of it but not only simple process we concentrate on whole uh, whole chain uh, from melt from chemical analyze up to uh, end product uh, we use uh, we try to uh, generate efficient production chains cha chain for our customer which have also some boundaries uh, some restriction and uh, we customize then our works to optimize the develop pet process so for um, for those we use uh, many different um, experiments type uh, thyroid experiments from uh, max strain on glebe uh, hot tensile test uh, uniaxial compression test uh, also uh, multi-step uh, plane strain uh, tests to simulate for example um, uh, sheet, uh, sheet rolling, and also we scale it up to our continuous multi-stand hot rolling experiments. Um, in our institute, we have a lot of uh, lot of equipment for um, advanced characterization uh, from metallographic uh, uh, preparation to SEM analysis with. Uh, um vdx uh, w uh, um, e x and also edx or even ebsd um, we use those uh, not only to go deeper with uh, in in microstructure but also we try to understand whole process change chain and how each uh, process or step um, had influence on another on 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 further um, steps and also to if we understand those um, those phenomenon and uh, those those types of of uh, um, of machines we can uh, introduce the model which we develop physically uh, into our computational modeling by um, by implementation of of uh, mathematical uh, uh, models 
So for that, we use also uh, for very fast implementation for, for data harvesting, uh, uh, for example, for microstructure grind size evolution, we use um, uh, convocal neuronal networks for uh, for uh, like artificial in intelligence to interpret our microstructure and generate, for example, histograms of our uh, grind size distribution in inconels, al in, uh, nickel alloys, in, in uh, simply um, uh, hardened steel and so on, uh, for uh, fast uh, for fast uh, design of, uh, of of models. And this framework we'll we uh, we use uh, to improve uh, uh, many of uh, customer uh, customers um, technologies. Um, if we go to organization structure of our institute, we have <clears throat> uh, our director, uh, uh, Professor Pral. Uh, he is since 2018 uh, our director. Uh, Professor uh, Kavala was until this time, um, and uh, he is now a prorector uh, so of of, uh, of research and development of our university, and also uh, work on our institute. Um, the groups which we have, we working group uh, are two technological and two uh, methodological and one of course uh, uh, pilot facilities uh, group which uh, we um, uh, which contribute in in any uh, uh, experiments uh, such like uh, rolling um, hot rolling or, or cold rolling um, first working group uh, which developed technology of um, um, yeah of uh, production semi semi products uh, from light metals uh, as you can see uh, frau dr ullmann is the, the chief of this uh, stuff and also um, the another group uh, is uh, uh, mr Fra uh, hoffman work on on steels and uh, heavy metals I'm work in working group characterization material parameters. Mostly we concentrate on hot uh, deformation, but also melting, uh, uh, zero plasticity, um, heat treatment, thermomechanical uh, treatment, uh, at the end uh, also material characterization at the end of the process, so mechanical uh, properties and microstructure. The last uh, methodical group, the second one, is um, modeling and numerical simulation from Dr. Schmidtchen, and he worked on um, on development new uh, reduced uh, modeling tools and numerical simulation uh, for uh, fast uh, process analyze. And the colleague from uh, from me, um, Matthias Oswald, he. Um, uh, he worked for us uh, to um, to serve um, with facilities and experimental uh, uh, tasks which can be used by us. Uh, yeah, here uh, some some our objects. Of course, uh, we want to inspire new uh, new generation or next generation of young people for. Uh, Freiberger forming technology. Also, we want to process and material technology um, develop those technology from for metals and hybrids. Um, also, we want to uh, support technology development with simulation methods, not only numerical but also uh, experimental. Uh, we are because we work together with many uh, in that large industry not only in German, in Poland, in Russia, in USA, in Brazil uh, and so on, in China also, uh, we can call us uh, as global partner and also because we have such large uh, fit metal, uh, fit, uh, um, uh, because we work so intensive with industry, we are also relevant uh, player at the uh, Technical University in Freiburg. Um, 
now we will go to uh, my presentation, my work. Uh, since 2009, I worked on a topic uh, until 2015. Then it was two years to get my my PhD thesis uh, to the end. Um, I worked on topic uh, to develop new steel. Uh, it was the project from from uh, steelmaker, um, and uh, now I will go to motivation because 2009 uh, was a um, little bit uh, yeah a um, little bit difficult to uh, to achieve life wave with conventional steels. Uh, it was uh, decided to develop new uh, sort of steel, new, new grade, which can um, be better than um, than DP thousand, uh, DP uh, eight hundred also, and even uh, better than um, uh, press hardened steels like um, uh, MNB five for press hardening. So. Um, to achieve, we had, uh, of course, uh, conventional routes production chain, uh, where we needed to implement new concepts. So uh, our industry uh, customer partner uh, had chosen some restriction, which I will show you also later. And we had tried to uh, develop from chemical analyze new concept. Uh, of product uh, and also uh, the point was in 2009 that the uh, steel industry need to concentrate also for uh, new types of uh, cars uh, so in in direction electric electric uh, engine and uh, in this part it's very uh, difficult to achieve the, the the high capacity of batteries so uh, the life wave of uh, other components uh, can give you in the end effect uh, uh, quite uh, good uh, opportunity to uh, pick up a little bit more batteries in your car so that was also the idea and motivation so um of course in uh, in this case new steel uh, uh, to develop is quite difficult because uh, each chemical analyze you have also patented. So the main question was how we change technology of production and how we can get the patent uh, uh, claims to uh, from from beginning uh, to get the, the this this innovation into uh, place it into the patent. Um, so we uh, have chose chose um, that we need to concentrate on ultra high strength uh, low alloy bionitical steel with written um, austenite, uh, which com, com uh, which have combination of very high uh, tensile uh, strength and also uh, high um, total elongation, as you can see. Uh, in the in the middle, the red one uh, uh, field is uh, are those uh, materials, and that was the the, the boundary, or, or that was the request from from our uh, industrial partner. Of course, we can go into the uh, third uh, re re uh, generation advanced high strength steels. But they are expensive because of high alloy uh, content, nickel, chrome, uh, manganese, uh, or even to the second one. But every each of, of those have this restri restriction. With those, you cannot go into the uh, um, um, automotive industry and set up that they need to uh, change the whole concept of carrossery. So we needed to uh, develop cheap material with very high uh, those two properties uh, how we will how i have achieved um, we had i had uh, decide 
to go in direction um, yeah, by night with routine, uh, routine austenite. Um, from there is uh, since 70 years uh, um, large amount of research, but um, directly some sheet to, the, to, to, to produce was not even very difficult to achieve because the, the machine, uh, the, the rolling force was too low or the, the heat treatment was very time consuming. So we had uh, we have looking for process where I can um, um, combine um, raw hot um, the production process to go to the, the geometry and uh, at the end also to get um, um, high or, or long uh, transformation times. So um, the Bionetical steel, which uh, I had chosen, um, are in microstructure. Um, they build built up from uh, two types of microstructure. We have um, bionite or ferrite plates, which are very um, uh, hard uh, and combine um, in this in this uh, microstructure um, have high. V um, very small uh, of, of plates, and between those plates we have um, we have uh, austenite in in uh, films, as you can see here, for example, between and here uh, very small parts. You can see here also such such uh, films. That's the by uh, austenite, and uh, what we had here each it out is to, is, is uh, ferrite. Uh, the main problem of those uh, sort of steels is uh, the block uh, blocks of uh, austenite which can be danger to toughness of this material. So uh, after intensive literature research uh, we have uh, seen that uh, the blocky austenite is very dangerous and we need to avoid it in large amount and in large um, islands, as you can see. And that was the main uh, idea uh, to, uh, to produce this on a hot rolling mill. So, um, as you can see, here's some uh, semantic illustration of hot rolling mill. Uh, in industrial profile, of course, uh, we have in industry uh, much uh, more uh, rolling stand. Here on uh, this image, uh, we have only four because uh, this is also our pilot rolling mill. Uh, but uh, by industry, you you see we we started in industrial uh, production with 250 millimeter of thickness. And end up with three millimeter. Uh, so that was the, um, the the question was how we can simulate it on pilot rolling mill. Um, of course, uh, we know uh, that we need to explain um, our process with uh, some research uh, uh, experiments uh, from from physical simulation. So we had many um, stages of this process. Uh, uh, we uh, beginning with heating, then we have rolling, cooling and coiling. Why coiling? Because we have uh, I had choose that coiling uh, if we um, go something like with coiling uh, temperature about 400 degree. Uh, we know that the coil will cool it down in about two days. So this um, this place for for the for for transformation have a lot of time to achieve our uh, transformation into the bionite. Um, if we go um, from the beginning, what we need to know it's the um, heating maximum and minimum heating temperature. I will show you why. Of course, we have uh, later. I will show you why. Of course, we have surface quality, 
um, by rolling we need to know uh, what kind of um, hardening uh, we have if we have uh, very uh, high n uh, parameter uh, or um, the, the material softed very uh, strongly in dynamic uh, case or also soft uh, softening um, in each case, we we know that the if the grind is really a good refinement, we know that the binitical transformation will nucleate uh, very fast. So that was uh, that won't what we want. It's it's uh, it's very small austenitic grind at the end of uh, of uh, last stand. Of course, we need to know by cooling we have static softening after uh, after last stand. Uh, even if we cool it down, the, the microstructure will soft it. And also, we need to know where our uh, microstructure go into wrong direction. That means transform into ferrite and perlite. Uh, why? Because first of all, ferrite is very have uh, very low. Uh, um, strength and perlite can generate very simply very easy cracks which can uh, uh, um, grow into the hard hardened uh, face and destroy our uh, material and also of course after coiling or, or by co coiling we achieve uh, properties because of binite transformation and the the main aim of this process was to generate material which is um so uh, total to, um, tensile um, ultimate uh, strength and total elongation more than 80 100 megapascal uh, um, percent so that was the the um, um the customer requirement how we uh, can generate some information for our uh, uh, for our pilot tri trial or even uh, for our um, first trials by industry. So first of all, we choose the machine. Um, on our institute, we have many of them. I had uh, chosen the the Glebel, um, and we can uh, with this machine melt uh, material uh, even in if I have already no what kind of chemical analyze uh, I need it. Uh, I can uh, bring it into the machine. This is the main chamber here in the this place. If we open, we see uh, two grips where we have a power supply for heating, thermocouple, two uh, anvils. That's the um, that's the difference between this machine and uh, and uh, Glebel 3800 3, because the tools are don't uh, touch the sample, so we can choose different temperature for sample and for the tools, and that's improved also uh, um, our flexibility. That means we can melt the samples in the middle. You can see the the crucial and the, the solenoid uh, springs. If we melt it in the middle, the material, uh, we can uh, we can choose how uh, fast we solidify this material, and then after solidification, we uh, shredded the crucial uh, from the sample away, and we can directly uh, form the material. So we can realize it here very cost. Uh, um, po um, very low cost production chain like uh, direct charging. Um, if we go to the process of uh, rolling, uh, we have to choose uh, what kind of uh, tests we want to use. Uh, we can use in, in main chamber um, uh, after rebuild of uh, or, or change the tool uh, uh, tools we can um, make uni-axial compression test uh, or we can uh, make plane strain for example to generate the flow course oh sorry and even um, in this case we uh, have a plane strain uh, um, stress uh, state uh, which is um, not similar directly but with 
this uh, stress state, we can simulate the rolling condition of flat products. And with max strain, which you can see here, this is the, the bar and upper and the upper and bottom uh, anvil, you can uh, simulate uh, uh, wire uh, rolling. And we use it really for wire rolling because max strain can accumulate uh, many uh, uh, quite large deformation. And for all, we can measure it with this machine because we have here windows, also directly the geometry of, after each step. If we go to uh, to cooling um, uh, condition or uh, cooling condition and, and annealing condition, if we need to anneal it, we can choose um, the, mm, the separate unit, uh, which we can uh, uh, show that uh, um, we can um, um, converse this unit to uh, to tension um, tension unit with mobile conversion unit, and you can see this is very similar to Glebel 1500. So with this machine, you have two Glebels, um, and you can make laser or LFODT dilatometry, and even uh, because this machine can be uh, very easy uh, for us to um, change the tools, we can rebuild it, we can even uh, make some uh, annealing or, or even um, continuous annealing simulation, for example, for after cold rolling um, of samples. So um, with this machine have quite large, really large capability, which we use to um, generate information for our pilot rolling test. If we know the pilot, pilot rolling uh, condition, we can go by us. Um, uh, we can go uh, by us in whole simulation. That means we can simulate from beginning, uh, from reheating or direct charging uh, through the controlling uh, condition. Uh, maybe with, as you can see here, uh, the tools um, uh, multi-step. In this case, we have have made uh, three steps, cool it down with definite uh, cooling uh, cooling speed, and even simulate the the coiling uh, cooling. So um, the whole process, what was developed for my PhD uh, by me, was. Uh, the hot rolling simulation uh, with cooling. It takes the simulation a little bit, uh, not so long than, than three minutes in whole uh, after after reheating, and the coiling simulation, which takes uh, 24 hours. So the Glebe hydraulic was uh, started uh, early morning and uh, shut it down after 10 minutes. Um, and the electric of the machine was uh, working uh, one day more. So um, quite unique machine. You can choose which element of the machine uh, you can you can uh, need to work. And also it's, it's very interesting for the safety uh, uh, because you can leave the machine uh, uh, without any uh, operator overnight, and it's work just fine. Um, if we have this, those conditions, we can translate it to uh, our uh, multi-stand continuous rolling mill. As you can see, our stand, first stand in this picture, you can see this. This is the rough mill, and three uh, three finished rolling mills. So we can generate. Uh, the, the strips with width of uh, 12 centimeter, so a little bit more than, than five uh, inches, and uh, about length uh, up to five meter. Uh, Why up to five meter? Uh, this is the whole uh, uh, schematic uh, image. So we have here heating. This is rough rolling mill, the finished rolling mill. And here is holding furnace. So we want to simulate 24 hours cooling down of, of large coil. So we need to use uh, this furnace. 
and we cool it down to the room temperature. What about results now? I had explained what kind of experiments I had choose to uh, to use, and uh, this is the the material. The material was um, take it first from literature. Uh, so it's uh, quite high uh, carbon content, uh, 1.5 silicon, 1.5 uh, manganese, and uh, copper 1.5. Why? Uh, because the copper can give you higher uh, uh, strength because of uh, transformation temperature, where you can indicate also precipitation of copper. And what you can also uh, make, um, it's copper give you better um, uh, heat, uh, um, um, yeah, heat uh, properties. Uh, so those uh, those um, um, properties was chosen to to be, uh, yeah, uh, to be uh, to stay in the in this in this material. But everything else, we uh, I can can uh, I can change. So what we what I have done is I had take the the, the basic uh, chemical composition. I know it uh, from calculation from thermocalc, matcalc, and uh, other um, thermodynamical software. What kind of physical properties have it? And I have generate from this function new uh, new chemical composition variable uh, but the properties of the the material was was, was the same and the copper here uh, give you uh, some um, problems by reheating you cannot choose higher temperature than than uh, 1150 degree Celsius degree because the copper can melt it on the surface and infiltrate a material and generate um, something like red cracking. Um, what we can do with this material to improve our uh, pilot rolling uh, um, condition to to choose first of all we have uh, uh, we have a um, rolling process. So the main aim, aim was to develop such process where we have uh, low uh, dislocation density, so low uh, hardening at the end of rolling, but the microstructure need to be um, need to be uh, refinement. So we have we want to have a, a very small grind size of austenite. And this grind need to be uh, softed. So what we need is to be uh, in this part of softening curve. That means if we uh, if we deform, we need to wait a little bit uh, after last deformation. Um, that means uh, if you can, you can shut it down the the first uh, cooling stand cooling section in your hot rolling mill but i had chosen that uh, we can also uh, control it this with um uh, with uh and finish rolling temperature so if you can see i can calculate from this uh, from this model um softening uh, properties of this material after uh, after each uh, different uh, rolling with different um, uh, finished rolling temperature, but with cooling down, so so I can calculate anisothermal um, uh, condition. And after that, you can see that by 950 degree, that's quite high for hot rolling of strips, that we can achieve the the maximum of softening by the lower uh, t temperature so that means that needs that that this will be my um my optimal microstructure so refinement and uh, uh grind and softed so after this i can go also to another direction what will be uh, my 
by need by need transformation temperature uh, until which temperature i need to uh, cool it down so as you can see this is the uh, ctp uh, c uh, um so tra transformation temperature time uh, um by continuous cooling uh, diagram where i see the um the perlite uh, nose and also by by night field and what we had what i had chose of course with 0 0.2 it's enough cooling speed to to suppress my perlite transformation material but from side of industry it's not possible to cool it down over whole uh, roll out uh, with uh, 0 0.2 and we had ch i had choose 10 kelvin per second um of course uh, if we know that that we need to to uh, get more than 10 Kelvin per second because of the the, the machines which give our, our boundary condition. Uh, we need uh, we need also to know if it's really work. So I had chosen to to use also um, uh, Glebel to to develop uh, TTT diagrams. And the, as you can see, this is the field where I have my uh, a process window for transformation. So we cool it down uh, and go into the binit uh, stage, binit field, and very slowly in coil cool it, it down. Okay, now we will go to experimental modeling as, uh, as you have heard it. I can use the HDS4, the V40 to uh, simulate uh, some condition and uh, that's the whole technique which which I have done uh, we austenite by 1150 then going to 1050 Celsius degree with first deformation the first deformation as you can see it's uh, it's enough to uh, to uh, refine mat material then we have also finished uh, stand simulation and with, we variate the different, uh, different uh, finer finish deformation temperature and go 10 Kelvin per second to the coiling temperature. We can choose those 450, 400, 350 degree and then hold over uh, 24 hours. The results, of course, the aim was to generate binitical microstructure by some condition which i had also calculated before 850 degree it's not in uh, it's not enough to soften it uh, material as you can see we have a brown face and by needle itching that means this this is uh, uh, this is martensite and as you can see here we have also some some uh, some uh, martensite but most you see here, for example, ideal microstructure, binitical, um, binitical uh, microstructure. Here, sorry, it's not 350; it's also 400. So, but as you can see, 900 degree finished rolling temperature and coiling temperature 350. It's uh, great because we have fully uh, binitical microstructure with uh, return martensite. As we know now the condition, we can we can directly go to our uh, rolling uh, uh, pilot rolling stand stand. So um, here is some 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 results of, uh, of directly from from the the, the, the facility uh, with uh, ro hot rolling stand uh, one two three four and uh, last four deformations. Um, with uh, rolling force, force by different uh, finish roll by by different uh, IMET finish uh, rolling temperature thousand degree 970 930 as you can see by thousand degree the the geometry change is is the same for each uh, process you can see by thousand degree we have a uh, uh, very low uh, uh, rolling speed, uh, rolling force. That means the material after after uh, um, third stand uh, softed. And if we go down with with the the I mean temperature 
the material will be harder even by 930 you see the the hardness or, or not the hundreds the, the hardening uh, will be higher so we had i had chose that the 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 best is first of all to see 970 or even 1000 degree and i have choose then the 1000 degree as you can see our um OTS uh, we have a little bit more than uh, um 300 of uh, top, uh, of uh, ultimate um, of of UTS and very high um even very high elongation it's it's about 22 and by higher coiling temperature even uh, 29 so very very high what's uh, and we we want to see where is the difference in in microstructure oh, from what uh, from what depend our uh, our um, properties and um, if you see the the amount of austenite doesn't change large um, we need to go to deeper and yeah, this is this is a little bit more, uh, of course, uh, different by also micro alloying. Uh, we can achieve that we a little bit get higher by by lower temperature, but by higher it doesn't matter. Uh, about uh, total elongation, and by um, by 450, it's the the sweet point of of condition where we get very high uh, UTS by also very high total elongation so um i had chosen 450 is also optimum for industrial uh, trials if we go to um, microstructure you can see 500 uh, degree um coiling by 500 degree uh, goes into very high um elongation and you see we have even many uh, islands of uh, of blocky austenite but it's work also by 400 we have very fine thin layers so uh, in this case we have higher uh, UTS so now to industrial tries I will speed up a little bit um, we had choose I had choose new uh, chemical composition in the same way uh, but also to uh, um, to generate some chemical composition uh, with uh, this also can be done large melts. So we had uh, we had uh, melt forty tons of materials. That means we are by six or seven coils, um, and you can see with this chemical composition without uh, 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 expensive uh, uh, chemical uh, elements we achieve quite large uh, quite large uh, uh, UTS but uh, by this example here we have uh, problems with uh, last stand temperature we didn't get high uh, enough but those those this middle temperature uh, get very good properties. So we have 28 uh, megapascal uh, by percent or by high uh, coiling temperature, we get also very, very good properties. Yeah, um, and we now go to my summary. My summary, it's uh, from AGS Global Machine. We can develop our first idea of the process uh, and go to pilot uh, trials on, on a little bit uh, larger facility and then if we improve that's the scaling work we can go um, third point higher scale and go directly to industrial trials i know it's uh, time intensive because um, we want to um, uh, take the costs quite low so we don't need um, more industrial tri trials to prove it um, so we use mostly pilot trial trials uh, and also global yeah um, what we have here as, as outlook i think 
the main problem it uh, will be at the end uh, new design for cutting and deep driving materials for those uh, steels but we have some idea and we have also some patents on this field of course tool wearing and also we need to know the spring back uh, of this material so uh, thank you very much and that's uh, all from my side uh, i'm quite interested in your question Thank you very much. Great. Thank you, Dr. Kapala. It was uh, very good, your presentation. Appreciate you putting that together. Uh, one of the things you mentioned early in your presentation, you referred to the Glebel, the Glebel as a harvester of data. And that, I like that description. I haven't heard that before. So uh, maybe we'll <laughs> okay. trademark that. Uh, we do have a, a number of, of questions here. So and I may ask you to, to jump around in your presentation a little bit. Yeah. Uh, one of the questions, actually, I think if you're on, you can go to slide 14 or 15. Uh, it asked, how are you positively identifying austenite? Okay, um, I show you here uh, not m large amount of data, but each uh, micrographs was to also um, improve, um, check it on SEM, and uh, we check it with ABSD. So uh, if you want, you can find in internet my PhD thesis. It's uh, Sorry that for that is in German, but uh, you can see the um, and the, the ABSD analyze, uh, and you can find uh, those images from from this analyze. So uh, that was the um, so by SEM uh, we have identified identif identificate uh, the the austenite. Great, thank you. And I, <clears throat> I believe on slide 16, someone asked what kind of cooling is used for the hot rolled strip. Okay, um, we have um, many types of of mixed uh, mixed uh, um, nozzles. So we can use laminar cooling, we can use spray cooling, and also um, also because the strip is quite uh, small, we can use uh, compression uh, air also in those nozzles. And we have six section for about uh, twelve meter. Okay, thank you. Uh, the question here was, what thermodynamic software do you use to predict structure or properties? I mean, that was um, a reference to slide yeah. 27. Yeah, um, at the beginning, I had taken uh, the, the, the Fortran uh, program from uh, Professor Badesha. I have implemented it new, uh, in, in, new in Mathematica for, me, uh, for myself to understand how the, the function are, uh, are calculated, uh, but also I had uh, proved it in in thermocalc, uh, and uh, the, the 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 last one which which now we have it's matcalc, but we have chose uh, I had chose uh, my own software from from uh, uh, my own route uh, uh, and the thermocalc, so that was uh, use it. Okay. Thank you. And a couple of questions about the HDS V40. And I'm not sure if you can answer this if you're, it's, the question is, what is the maximum thickness and maximum strain applied in steel stimulations in the HDS V40? A plain strain, you mean? Uh, you mean. Uh, yes, I, I think I said, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, in the steel simulations on the HDS V40, the maximum thickness and maximum strain applied. Okay, uh, so by uh, by plane strain we achieved uh, uh, by uh, not by flow curve measurement by by um, uh, hot rolling simulation we achieved the 1.7, but um, of course uh, 10 millimeter and uh, strain rate uh, strain up to uh, 1.7 it's like thickness 0 0.4 or 0 0.5 uh, of, of the, the that what you see uh, in in the machine after that so we have um, we have a change of of wave uh, width also so uh, typically we choose 1 point, 1.4 for uh, for this simulation if we want to generate flow curves we use 1.2 and by cylindrical test, uh, 1.3 uh, of this machine, because in this machine we choose different uh, 
shape of uh, as the standard by Glebel. By Glebel standard is uh, one uh, 15 millimeter high, and we use one point, uh, uh, 18 millimeter high. And for for that we can generate much higher strains. Great. And are you separating the rough and the finished rolling? Simulations. So, are you doing those in two different ones, or are you doing them all in one simulation? Uh, uh, we we use uh, we cannot uh, go to room temperature. So we uh, we if we simulate hot rolling uh, then of strip, then we go directly um, uh, yeah rough and finish rolling together. Okay. And how rapidly do you quench or can be quenched in? Uh, a deformed specimen in the HDSV40. Yeah, that's that's a very interesting question because it's not so. Uh, um, okay, because the, the the tool, the anvils, can be separated directly after the formation from the sample, so you cannot destroy uh, because of quenching uh, uh, the the, the um, hard plates, so Wolfram carbides. So you can you can move the the, the anvils from the sample and then directly with uh, with water uh, aerosol you can cool it down. So quite quite fast. Uh, we had achieved something like 70, 80 Kelvin per second by uh, small thickness. So something like two uh, two millimeter uh, of end thickness. By uh, cylindrical tests, we can achieve water quenching. So we can we can separate the the tools, move out from sample, and we throw the the sample directly into the water. So uh, thousand Kelvin per second. Great. And how are you uh, measuring uh, the transformation? Is that being measured in the HDSV40, or are you uh, you using another device? Um, we have laser uh, uh, laser um, dilatometer, which we can uh, um, which we can. So before we we had uh, yeah 2011 we had used a laser dilatometer on Glebel. So the the, the Glebel have uh, additional channel for uh, for laser dilatometer, so I can uh, measure it with this laser, red laser, the change of uh, of uh, dimension um, uh, of of the sample. So I can I can use it. Great. Looks like we have uh, a bunch of questions are coming in, so we have some time. Maybe we'll go a couple minutes over if that's okay. I want to ask you a couple more questions. Uh, here we have uh, how do you, and this is uh, I think believe in reference to slide forty one. Uh, one more time. I I didn't understand this uh, acoustic. Sure, I'm sorry. Uh, slide 41. 41. Okay. Uh, how do you distinguish martensite from bainite through nitrile etching? Uh, 41. Okay. Yeah, that's um, that's also um, quite uh, quite difficult question, but because uh, this uh, uh, transformation is done. Um, by 350 uh, up to uh, down to I think 200 degree, uh, we cannot talk about martensite uh, from uh, because martensite grow uh, under the MS temperature. So we have uh, that's the point by by this analyze uh, why I call it uh, bainite and not not martensite. That's the main point. But of course, if we uh, see um, microstructure directly, we can see uh, with uh, VDS uh, by such large uh, islands also the carbon uh, the difference uh, between uh, boundaries um, um, of 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 re return austenite uh, and also by uh, by the film um, films of of bainite. So. Uh, we see with our atom sound uh, the difference also um, in in uh, carbon content. Of course, you can you can tell me that okay, uh, it's martensite, and uh, by coiling coiling will uh, will we have some aus temp uh, temping tempering, but. Um, uh, I will strike back <laughs> be, uh, because we have all, we are higher than martensite star temperature. So that's the 
uh, question of of arguments okay thank you and so we are at, at just over an hour here uh, if people do need to drop off we uh, we won't be offended if, if you hang up on us here uh, but we do want to go a couple of minutes longer uh, just a couple of questions left uh, one question is how did you follow the microstructural evolution during rolling did you use any specific model um yes um it, of course now it's it's quite a little bit uh, um, few years ago uh, at the beginning because i have worked it to, uh, first with with simply models with uh, jm mrk models uh, i choose a double upset method to check the material and uh, to to model it uh, with uh, some different uh, chemical composition as you have uh, saw this and then uh, on this uh, i had uh, tried to model it uh, the the softening kinetic um, by hds 40 simulation and also by pilot rolling mill. But now we have uh, much complicated, much advanced models with uh, histogram calculation of of uh, grind size distribution, grind size uh, classes. So now I will be done this much much better. <laughs> okay. And I, last question, I guess, is uh, how do you convert the strain rate used in plane strain compression? to the proportion of roll velocity in actual rolling? And that may be a very um, big question, but. Uh, we had, try, I had tried it, uh, but every time uh, it's it's difficult. Uh, it's quite difficult. Of course, uh, you can start uh, in pilot rolling mill with, uh, uh, with uh, 10 millimeter thickness and then go with the same, um, uh, the same uh, properties. Uh, with the same um, strains and try to generate the same strain rates, but but Glebel can work uh, um, non-continuous, simulate non-continuous process, but a pilot rolling mill cannot it. Uh, so um, I have on Glebel much more uh, flexibilities. We have to try it. Uh, but in this case, um, we need to make our HDS uh, HDS uh, um, uh, rolling strategy new uh, to compare it with uh, with pilot rolling mill. We had did we didn't do this because of of a lack of time. But um, you can take directly the, the 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 condition from the continuous rolling mill and go uh, return to the uh, hda hds 40. great well thank you very much uh, i do want to be respectful of everyone's time so i think our time is up here uh, but if anybody out there does have questions uh, for dr kapala uh, if you'd like to connect with him directly please reach out to me or anybody at dsi and we'd be happy to share contact information uh, if you have any technical questions about the Glebel please contact our service team. And I, I mention this every week. Uh, we do have that new service portal uh, that's available on Glebel.com. Uh, you go to resources and then click on customer support portal. Uh, you can log in, so that's for you know, Glebel users only, but you can log in once you create an account, log in and access. Uh, there's, you can create support tickets or a knowledge base, so that's very useful. Uh, so I encourage our users to do that. If you have any questions about how a Glebel can support your research, please, email uh, me or anyone on our team and we can connect you with an application expert in your area or area of study and they can help you. Uh, thank you. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, again, uh, thank Dr. Kropala for putting together, putting together this great presentation. We really do appreciate it. So please everyone uh, stay safe and healthy. Thank you very much.